my 2021 Tracker Pro 170. I've had this boat for about 13 months. I've been operating it year round, roughly seven, eight times a month. Um, I've got a pretty good idea of what I like, what I do not like, what they've got right, what they did not get right. So let's get into it. Right now, the 2023 models are running just over $20,000 with a 50 horsepower motor, which is still a great deal for this boat. So your choices as far as options are pretty limited in the Tracker Pro 170. You've got your different horsepower motors. You can get vinyl flooring or carpet. You can get a boat cover. You can choose your color, either starlight red or black for your boat. And you can choose whether to have trailer brakes. That is it. It would have been great if you can swap out the trolling motor from the factory and the electronics because the hook twos are garbage that it comes with and that Edge 45 is pretty much useless as well. The average package weight of the Tracker Pro 170 is listed as 1,840 pounds. This number includes the boat, trailer, motor, and gas. This is an important number for you to know when it comes to your tow capacity of your vehicle. The Tracker Pro 170 in a storage space will take up 20 feet, one inch. So for those of you that want to store it in a garage or a storage unit, that's also a good number to know. At the widest point, is six feet, 10 inches. One of the great things about the boat is the motor. Um, I went with the highest horsepower available, which is the 50 horsepower Mercury four stroke. And I've been extremely happy with it. It's been very dependable, easy to work on. I do all my own oil changes, filter changes, and annual services. The Tracker Pro 170 does not come from the factory with a tachometer. You can either install a mechanical tack or do what I, as well as many others have done, install the Mercury Vessel View Mobile. These devices cost roughly $225 on Amazon and are very easy to install. They work via Bluetooth to an app that you will download on either your iPhone or Android. This device will show you on your phone your current hours, your maintenance due list and the hours remaining before those items are due. You're also able to update the maintenance due list after maintenance is completed resetting those hours. It also shows you current oil temps, pressures, fuel flows, and number of other information while the engine is running and connected to your phone. Very easy to install again, $225. I'll link it below, a must if you buy this boat. The boat from the factory comes with a three-bladed prop. I changed the prop out to the four-bladed Spitfire. The advantages of the four-bladed prop to the three-bladed prop are, you get on plane much faster, it handles much better at higher speeds, and you get less vibration from the propeller. The boat will come with a generic standard tie-down. You're going to want to replace that tie-down. The boat buckle is a great replacement option. It's sturdy, lasts a long time, and very easy to use. It's quick in and out. Push the button down, unlock it, store it. When you're ready to put the tie-down back on, push the button, clip it back in, hold the button back to the down position to allow you to tighten it. You push the button down again, tighten it, and that's it. And I'll add a link to this product for the boat buckle below the video. All right, starting with the back of the boat, the battery and fuel tank compartment. It is a somewhat small compartment to work in. If you want to remove these batteries and replace them, then it is a bit tight. It's definitely doable and it's not that bad, but I do wish that they would have created a little bit bigger of a compartment. All right, as we work our way forward, the other storage compartment here, forward of the battery fuel tank compartment, which is lockable, isn't that bad. Um, it's not great. I know folks put their battery chargers in here. I do not. Um, but all in all, as far as storage is concerned in this boat, it's not bad, it's, it's adequate.
talk a little bit about these locks. It's great that they lock, but they're pretty useless. I haven't replaced these just yet. I probably will. If I uh, have any trips coming up where this boat's gonna sit out in a parking lot at a hotel or at a campsite when I'm not around, I would probably want something more secure than these. You could probably pop a screwdriver in there and unlock these, no problem. Another storage compartment is here on the port side seat underneath it. It's, uh, it's, you know, like I said, it's adequate. I've got Ziploc bags, some tools. I've got my Lawrence petroleum motor remote anchor. So I add some weight when I'm alone on this side. Fire extinguisher, nav light. It's, like I said, it's adequate for a 17 foot boat. The cockpit's not that bad. It's pretty roomy. I'm five foot ten and I'm comfortable in the seat. I think if you're over six feet tall, it might be a little tight, but uh, all in all, fairly comfortable. Seats are fairly comfortable. It's got what you need, an RPM gauge, a fuel gauge, speedometer, your nav lights, your anchor, aerator for your live well, your bilge, and a horn. What else do you need? something I do think they did right. It's big, it adds square footage to the top deck, and it is a roomy rod locker. I've got 10 rods in there right now with probably room for four more, maybe five more. So it is a roomy rod locker. And like I said, that that is a plus. That's a pro, pro 170. The only thing, once again, that lock. Not really happy about these locks. I need to replace these because if I go on a trip and this boat will be out, the stuff in here is worth a lot of money. I'd want a lock that's not gonna get broken into just using a flathead screwdriver. All right. You get one light in the cockpit area which is sufficient. Most bass boats have that one light right there. Works well, lasts a long time. And this storage we've got, which I use for flotation devices. It's really not useful for anything else. All right, so let's talk about the live well. The live well is not lockable, which technically doesn't really need to be. It has a 15 gallon capacity and has a 500 gallon per hour aerator fill pump. It works well if you're doing small tournaments, it's just fine. it was and I will likely add a lock to this compartment um, it's a small compartment we all know how we all love our tackle and have a lot of it and this compartment just doesn't have that much room I wish it was bigger but with the price of the boat given the limited somewhat limited space I guess it is what it is it's not a make it or break it at least it wasn't for me um, it works but once again, it's definitely on the small side. All right, so 
now we're going to get into more of the cons. What I do not care for, um, definitely what I do not like, and items that were just not well thought out. One is this panel here. I upgraded from the Minn Kota Edge 45, which was, I will say, absolutely useless, especially in any win. I replaced it with the Tarova and the installation, I must say, I did myself and many others have, and if you read the forums and threads, was a disaster because of the access. This panel here, when you take it off, only allows you a hole about this big to get your arm in to get the bolts and nuts tightened onto the new trolling motor. You had to get creative. A lot of us invented tools that don't exist in order to reach all the way back there to the front of the bow to tighten down these nuts and bolts. So that is a major problem for me. Thank God it's done, but it's one thing that going forward, if I buy another boat or when I buy another boat is a must. It must have easy access to both electrical as well as the bow area for installation or upgrades of trolling motors. It's the same with the electronics in the forward portion of the boat. There is a wire, but if you want to wire any more wires going to the front, it is a pain. So they didn't make it very easy to access or install optional equipment that you wanted to do as far as upgrades are concerned. So now another issue that I have is this pin. Well, I shouldn't say I have. Thank God that I have not had any issues with the swing away tongue locking pin. I've heard that numerous folks have had issues and this pin either handle has come off or the pin itself has sheared. So it's something to look at as a possible upgrade replacing that pin. Let's talk about the spare tire. The boat does not come with a spare tire. This is something that you will have to install and is a must. I've installed it up here at the bow, just underneath with locking us that you can buy on Amazon, Walmart, and make sure that this tire is always inflated at the correct pressure, especially if you're doing long trips. with stock. This Lorance Hook 4X. You have no option to upgrade when buying the boat. It just comes with this. It would be great if they allowed you the option to choose different electronics and the factory would install them rather than doing it yourself and having to rig wires through this boat, which like I said before is a disaster. This unit is only good for depth finding. It's completely useless as a fish finder. Um, it's, it's garbage. I would highly recommend first things that you do in upgrades on the boat are electronics and trolling motor. All right, something else I wanna talk about is the single leaf spring. The single leaf spring is on the 2021 and prior models. I believe at some point back in the past, they did have more than one leaf spring. And then the 2023 models have three leaf springs. Um, so with that said, you're good if you're buying brand new right now for prior year models, um, it's, it's a problem. If that leaf spring goes, you don't have any sort of backup. So that can make for a really bad day. I would highly recommend either some point if you have an older boat replacing those leaf springs with uh, 
more than the one leaf spring, either two or three. My recommendation, much smoother ride and a lot safer. All right, something that I forgot to mention are these seats, the fishing seats. I personally do not use them. I fish from the deck without the seats. I may occasionally have one in the back if my son comes along or someone else. But just wanted to say they're very bulky when driving the boat, even with the backrest stowed, very difficult to see in front of you, which I believe makes for an unsafe condition. These seats are also far from stable. And when sitting on them, you're constantly just based on this seat design, you feel like it's pushing you forward off the seat. If you do like to fish on fishing seats, then I highly recommend getting a much lower profile seat that's much tighter in the tubes. All right, as far as the cup holders, you've got one right here at the console, which I guess if you're fishing the deck, that's where you come and grab your drink because it's definitely awkward grabbing it from the console. I went ahead and bought some at Walmart. There's one on each side. And I also put a cup holder over by my foot pedal. All right, rub rails. The boat from the factory does not come with any rub rails. So you're gonna want to install these rub rails if you don't want the sides of your boat to get all scratched up while you dock. I'll add a link to the bottom of this video to these exact rails that I installed. Last but not least is the vinyl versus the carpet. I've got the vinyl, which the advantage is it's easy to clean. The disadvantages of the vinyl are they're not properly glued down. It's coming apart in certain areas. And during the summer, if you live somewhere that gets really hot, like I do here in North Texas, you can't step onto this vinyl during the summer barefoot. You've always got to have something on your feet. So that is pretty much it. That wraps up my Tractor Pro 170 review and information. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. Thanks again for stopping by.